Okay, uh, financial leverage and beta. So we, previously we talked about operating leverage. This refers to the firm's sensitivity to the firm's fixed cost of production. We saw how when we increase the fixed cost, it uh, increased beta. So, uh, financial leverage is a sensitivity uh, uh, to a firm's fixed cost of financing. The uh, Relationship between the betas of a firm's debt and equity and assets can be uh, given by beta of the asset is equal to the, the basically the weight in debt. So debt divided by debt plus debt equity uh, multiplied by the beta for debt plus the weight in equity. So the equity divided by debt plus equity, which is in most cases is uh, equal to total asset <laughs> multiplied by some beta, uh, the beta for equity. So financial leverage always increases the equity beta relative to the asset beta. So example here, we've got uh, uh, Grant Sport Incorporated that uh, currently all equity finance firm has a beta of 0.9. Firms decided to lever up the capital structure to, to one part debt to one, of one part equity, so a 50 50 capital structure. So, since the firm will remain in the same industry, its asset beta won't change, so it'll stay at 0.9. So, if we are assuming a zero beta for debt, its equity beta is going to double in size. So, the beta for Assets still at 0.9 is equal to the uh, weight of equity. So 1 divided by 1 plus 1 or 0.5 multiplied by the uh, equity beta. So that gives us um, uh, 2 times 0.9 or 1.8 for the equity beta. So, um, Dividend discount model. So, dividend discount model, the required rate of return is equal to uh, the dividend yield, uh, a, the coming year's dividend divided by the current price plus the growth rate. The dividend discount model is an alternative to the cap in for uh, our calculating firm's cost of equity. Uh, the, uh, the dividend discount model and cap in are internally consistent. Uh, Academics generally favor the CAPM, and companies seem to use the CAPM more consistently as well. Um, the CAPM uh, explicitly adjusts for risk and can be used by companies that don't pay dividends. Um, that uh, not all uh, using the dividend discount model is not um, not an option for uh, a firm that doesn't pay a dividend. So. So the uh, so capital bu capital budgeting and project risk. So uh, the uh, from the use one discount rate for all projects may over time increase the risk of the firm while decreasing the assets value. So we see um, we have these uh, projects, uh, these low return, low beta projects on the left hand side, and higher return, higher return, high beta projects on the right hand side but if we look at we add in the security market line that uh, can tell us why so we um, if we only use one rate of return the beta um, the uh, return for the firm the um, as our hurdle rate we're gonna incorrectly reject uh, low low beta projects and incorrectly accept uh, high beta projects. So these uh, uh, projects here would ha have positive NPVs and the projects here would have negative NPVs. You know, this is why we need to adjust for the, uh, uh, for the risk of the project. So, so we've got uh, a conglomerate company, a cost of capital based on CAPM, 11.1%. Uh, the risk-free rate is 2%. Uh, uh, market risk premium is 7%, and the beta, firm's beta is 1.3. So 
So the um, again, so 11.1% is equal to the 2% risk free rate plus the beta of 1.3 multiplied by the market risk premium. So company has uh, the following uh, investment projects. So and the, the one third in uh, automotive retailer, the uh, beta is two. Uh, computer hard drive manufacturer beta is 1.3 and electric utility. So we uh, multiply one third by each of those. We come up with the average beta for the assets. So if we're now, now if we're looking at a new electrical generation investment, which cost of capital should be used? So if we go and we look at the uh, security market line, relative to each of the types of the projects. So we've got automotive uh, and hard drive manufacturing and then electrical generation. We see the beta of the uh, and the expected re return or our required return on uh, electrical generation is going to be much less because the beta is much lower. So the correct answer is we should use 6.2% as the required rate of return for the electrical generation problem. 6.2% right. reflects the opportunity cost of capital investment in electrical generation, you know, given the unique risk of that project. So, so investments in hard drives and auto retailing should have higher discount rates. So we'll start the next lecture with the uh, cost of debt